Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Aditi Varma. I'm a junior consultant at the OECD Nuclear Energy Agency, the NEA. And I'd like to thank you for joining us today at this Global Nuclear Science and Engineering Commencement hosted by our agency in collaboration with the European Nuclear Energy Network. This event is being held to celebrate and recognize the accomplishments of the graduating classes of 2020 and 2021 who are experiencing a unique time in history due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. I myself graduated with a PhD in nuclear science and engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 2019. And my commencement meant a great deal to me. And I know that we all recognize the importance of marking and celebrating this momentous transition in your lives. And so I am truly delighted that we are able to gather in this way globally to celebrate you with the graduating classes of 2020 and 2021. A couple of logistical notes before we get started. People from around the world have registered to take part in this event. To ensure a stable connection and considering this large number of attendees, your video and audio functions have been disabled. Please feel free to send us your comments via the Q&A feature. If you experience any technical difficulties, please try the chat function. You can also join the webinar via telephone the international numbers are available in the confirmation email message you have received. The webinar is being recorded and will be made available online in the near future. And now it is my immense pleasure to give the floor to the NEA Director General, Mr. Magwood. Greetings to all of you all over the world. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this global commencement. Many of you are joining us from morning time and evening uh, wherever you are whatever time of day it is i hope that you're all well and safe and protecting yourselves during this global pandemic as Aditi mentioned uh, this global pandemic has interrupted many things and among the things that have been interrupted is the opportunity for all of you to celebrate your graduations through a commencement address we regret that you were not unable to enjoy that experience in person and we hope that this gathering today will replace that at least in a small way. As we come together to celebrate your accomplishments, we recognize that this is an important transition in your lives. After the graduation, you're becoming nuclear professionals. And whatever field you operate in, you will enter a, a fraternity of sorts, a very unique group of people that have their eye on the future, and optimism about the possible uses of technology. The nuclear field is very important today. In fact, it's very possible that we may find that the nuclear energy field is more important today than it has ever been. We are faced with a global challenge of reducing CO2 emissions around the world. And nuclear energy, we believe, will be a very important component to any success in that direction. Beyond energy, Nuclear plays a very important role in medicine, in space exploration, and in many other areas. And I believe that many of you are going to play very important roles in the future as these technologies or grow in many countries around the world. At this time, we believe the nuclear field is undergoing a very important transformation. Nuclear is, has to change and evolve with the times. When the nuclear energy industry first began back in the 1950s, it was largely controlled in, in, by governments um, and large organizations. But today we see an evolution. We see small companies, entrepreneurs becoming more involved in the nuclear field. We see people with new ideas all over the, in universities all over the world uh, going forward and bringing ideas to the table that can become the breakthroughs of the future. These breakthroughs are very important because if nuclear is going to play a successful role in the future, it has to change with the times. Nuclear has become safer, smarter, less expensive. It has fit into the global framework as it evolves over the course of time. You, you new graduates, are going to be the people who are going to have to take this burden on because those of us who are speaking today will probably not see the full fruition of the technologies coming forward today. That will take decades. 
And just as the roads who came before us, we have to pass baton to you in order to see these new technologies become successful. We need your thinking, we need your energy, and we need your commitment to the future because nuclear engineers are a unique breed. And I believe that you know that as nuclear engineers and nuclear scientists around the world, you have a special responsibility. Unlike any other field, you have to have a personal commitment to nuclear safety, a commitment to do your job and to make sure others are doing their job around you. As you graduate, you take that responsibility on. But you also bring the special characteristic of almost all nuclear engineers that I know, which is to be visionary, to look over the horizon, to see what comes next, and to always keep your eye out in the future. So in these days where there's so many questions to be answered, so many uncertainties about the future, I think it's important to, for you to remember to first, first be proud of what you are and what you've accomplished and what you will accomplish in the future. Be responsible, as I mentioned, for safety and be visionary. You must do that because that is your, 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 your heritage as nuclear engineers and nuclear scientists. I'll share with you that this is actually the very first commitment, commencement I've ever participated in. My own commencement, um, I had failed to show up. I was actually in the library at Carnegie Mellon University during the commencement because I refused to wear the cap and gown. But that's me. I just had a thing about that. Um, so you out there today, you don't have to wear the cap and gowns. You can be part of this and not hide in the library. As you go forward, I will, I'll give, leave you with one final thought. And that is that being in the nuclear business is not the easiest thing in the world. It is actually quite hard and quite difficult. And it, continue, it requires continued study, continued commitment. But if you want to save the world, this is a really good place to be. But if saving the world is not your thing, go do something else. But if you want to save the world, if you want to cure cancer, if you want to go to Mars, you're in the right place at the right time. And I congratulate you. Now today, we have a, a list of speakers who will be addressing you from around the world. And I'm very proud to have such a distinguished group of people speak with us today. The first of which is going to give us the keynote address is Dr. Rita Barenwall, who's Assistant Secretary for Nuclear Energy at the United States Department of Energy. Dr. Barenwall uh, serves, has served in that role um, for two years, I believe, uh, Rita, I think that's right, and was nominated by the President and confirmed by the Senate uh, to perform this role. She leads the DOE's efforts to promote research and development on existing and advanced nuclear technologies to sustain the existing U.S. fleet of reactors, enable deployment of advanced nuclear systems, and enhance the U.S.'s global commitments and energy competitiveness. Prior to this, she directed the Gateway for Accelerate Innovation in Nuclear Initiative at the Idaho National Laboratory. She has a long and distinguished career, and she is a Ph.D. and uh, graduate in physics from the, from, um, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, correct? I hope I got that right, because it's not on my paper. Anyway, uh, Rita, the floor is yours. Great, thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we hear you. Okay, excellent. Um, so I wanna first, before I get started, um, give a big thank you and shout out to Dr. Verma, who um, has pulled off this monumental feat of gathering all of us from across the globe on such short notice. Um, and so one, it's a, it's a privilege to be part of uh, the speakers today, so thank you for that. But hats off to Dr. Verma, um, looking for great things from you to come now that you've set the bar this high for yourself, so well done. Uh, thank you, Bill, for the invitation to speak to you today, and thank you all for attending. First of all, congratulations to the 2020 and 2021 graduating classes. While the start has been anything but normal, uh, you all have been able to accomplish so much during these very challenging times, as Bill had mentioned. We are going to need that determination and that flexibility to advance nuclear science and engineering. So I'm looking forward to very good things. Uh, I believe nuclear technology can solve many of our most challenging problems across the globe, and we definitely need you to help make that happen. Nuclear energy is revolutionary beyond electricity generation, though. It provides low emission energy for water desalination to achieve worldwide water security 
It can help decarbonize the industrial sector with process heat. It can help decarbonize the transportation sector with hydrogen production and electrification. We recently made a $9.2 million US, million dollar US uh, IFO award for a power plant here in Ohio in the United States to start to produce hydrogen in addition to the electricity that it, that it generates. And finally, uh, as, as Bill also alluded to, the betterment of humankind by way of medical applications and space exploration. New advanced nuclear reactors have the potential to solve the most diverse challenges that face our world today. Many of the countries that I uh, was able to visit prior to March of this year do see nuclear energy as a means to meeting their energy demand and growth, supporting their clean energy goals, and providing energy diversity and security just as we do here in the United States. And in my office at the Department of Energy, the Office of Nuclear Energy, we're focusing our efforts in four major areas. The first is to, to sustain our existing fleet. In the United States, we have 95 operating reactors, and it's very important that we continue to support their, their clean, their reliable operation. The second is to get advanced reactor technologies over the finish line. That's one of my top priorities. The third is to establish and maintain a critical fuel cycle infrastructure. And the fourth is for the United States to enhance our global competitiveness worldwide. And I know that working together, we can realize the enormous potential that nuclear energy has. I believe the nuclear industry is innovating now more than ever, especially in the advanced reactor technology space. Here in the United States, a diverse catalog of technology options are underway, from smaller micro reactors for small grids, remote or islanded communities, to SMRs, to larger reactors to meet large base load generation needs. We have the right reactor for every application. My office has taken action on making these technologies a reality by launching the Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program, or ARDP. This program focuses DOE and non-federal resources on the construction of advanced demonstration reactors that are affordable to build and to operate. And we've been moving very quickly to execute this exciting program. All through the past six months or so, uh, despite uh, our teams being very remote, we have maintained our schedule on deploying the uh, funding announcement and then accepting proposals, which closed last Friday. Uh, we've received many high quality applications and I'm so very excited for our teams to start reviewing them and then finally make awards. We uh, very much look forward to demonstrating the concepts that are selected and I look forward to potentially having some of your help uh, in that demonstration effort down the line. We're at a very exciting but a very crucial time for nuclear. We have the support from those that have previously dismissed nuclear and an opportunity to showcase its full potential. This field, whether it's an in industry, in government, national labs, or academia, has a very, very dire need for talented and diverse workforce to realize this vision. We need to tap into a variety of perspectives and diverse viewpoints to help us drive innovative solutions for the energy challenges that we face today and that I know we will face tomorrow. And this includes making sure that your voices are heard. And for that, I, I know you're graduating, but I still have some homework for you. Um, I hope that you actively participate in whatever endeavor you choose as you proceed. Make sure that your voices are heard. And I wanna share a, a, an anecdote with you. Um, when I was in eighth grade, uh, my teacher called my parents for an unscheduled parent-teacher conference, which was um, very nerve wracking. Um, because I, I suspected it wasn't good news and it, it, it was okay. It wasn't like she's doing great, but, but the feedback was that I wasn't participating enough in class, that I was doing fine, my grades were fine, but I needed to speak up and be engaged a little bit more. And so um, I grew up in a very traditional Asian Indian uh, household and my parents took me home and they said, did you hear what she said? And I said, yes, and they said, fix it. And so, <laughs> Really what it was, was that was a turning point for me um, and realized, uh, especially now in, in my professional career, that there's a reason why we are invited to certain meetings. There's a reason why we partake in certain activities. And my homework for you is when you do show up, show up on purpose, um, show up uh, with an objective. Uh, if you can, get a seat at the table. 
uh, you all are now uh, well well versed in your respective fields, um, and people should be looking to you for your perspective. So raise your hand, make your voice heard. So while uh, this is going to be challenging for industry and it requires a lot of work, I do view the future as being very, very bright for nuclear energy. I'm, the field has the best and the brightest innovators, and we just got a, a, a whole bunch more, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm very confident that together we can push the boundaries of nuclear energy as a vital component of our clean energy future. Thank you very much for having me, and more importantly, thank you very much for your decision to pursue a career in this industry. Congratulations to you. And I leave you with a quote that has been hanging in my kitchen for decades. And it's from a former President Abraham Lincoln in the United States. And it is, whatever you are, be a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rita. And I'll correct the record. Your undergraduates from MIT, but your PhD in materials is actually University of Michigan. So I apologize to all the Michigan grads out there for screwing that up. But again, Rita, thank you very much for your remarks. Um, next, um, to deliver the charge to the graduates, I welcome the professor and, uh, and head of the Nuclear Science and Engineering uh, Program, the Distinguished Professor of Engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, Dr. Ann White. Um, Ann has her PhD in physics from the University of California, Los, uh, Los Angeles. And um, she is going to give us the charge to the graduates. So Ann, if you will come on camera and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Bill. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone around the world. And congratulations to you, the graduates, on your tremendous accomplishments. And also congratulations to your families and friends, to your supervisors and colleagues, who were with you along the way during your journey. And thank you, Dr. Barrenwall, for your wise and inspiring remarks. I am deeply honored to be here today, to be part of this celebration, and to be given this exciting opportunity to address the new global classes of nuclear scientists and engineers. Today, I deliver a traditional charge to you, the graduates, in what has been a very untraditional year for all of us. Here's your charge. Do great things. The future is uncertain and risky, but you are ready to rise to the challenge. You are part of an international community, a community that is no stranger to risk assessment and to minimizing uncertainty. You are part of a culture that strives to expand access for all to safe and secure carbon-free energy, to advanced medical treatments, to enhanced food safety and agricultural practices. You are part of a culture that is dedicated to probing the deepest secrets of materials and matter, and to learning how to control energy and information at the quantum scale. Your culture is one that learns from mistakes, one which adapts and overcomes. Technical rigor, responsibility, doing what is right, it is woven into our fabric as nuclear practitioners. Our shared culture, the culture of nuclear science and engineering, has much to offer the world at this particular moment. My charge to you is therefore to continue doing what you do best and what you have been so well trained to do great things. There's no doubt that we are experiencing difficult times worldwide, but I have enormous hope and optimism. And you, the graduates in nuclear science and engineering around the world, are what gives me this hope and optimism. Technical solutions are needed now more than ever to address climate change, infectious disease, and access to clean food and water. Nuclear technologies have an essential role to play, and so do you. Your discoveries, your innovations, and your leadership are needed to help all of humankind. And each and every one of you, you are ready. For you, global challenges are global opportunities. So I know my charge is traditional, but there is no graduating class better positioned 
to take on this charge right now because it is such a fundamental part of who you are as members of the global nuclear community. So today, as we celebrate your academic accomplishments, we stand together at a portal to the future, a future in which all of you can and will do great things for humanity through nuclear science and engineering. Congratulations once more to the graduates of the global classes of 2020 and 2021. Thank you very much, and excellent remarks. And I agree with every every word of it. And I, I do hope that this that the students today were hearing that um, on on a very deep level because this is a very important time in history. Um, find the final speaker of the opening panel is Agneta Rising. Agneta um, is a very close partner and friend of the NEA. Um, she is director general of the World Nuclear Association and also uh, president of the World Nuclear University. Um, she uh, came to this position on January, January 2013, having previously held the position of vice president of environment at Vattenfall AB. Um, and in this post, she headed a pan-European department focused on energy, environment, and sustainability. And before that, she was director for business development at Vattenfall Generation. Um, Agneta, uh, we look forward to your remarks as you salute the graduates on behalf of the global nuclear industry. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bill. And uh, thank you to all taking part here. It's a great honor for me to, on behalf of the global nuclear industry, to give you some words. And it's not easy to find exactly the right words, but I would say the time is right for you. It's absolutely right time. Nuclear science, nuclear engineering can never be important enough. And now it's even more important. If we look to the technologies and we look to the, uh, to the science that uh, you all represent, they all contribute to the sustainable development goals. And it is absolutely fantastic to have so many of you that have chosen to go this way, this path. I started with radiation physics with emphasis on the medical side. And then I went into the nuclear industry, but all the time, environment <coughs> and the health and quality of life has been to heart. And if we look to what's happening in the, in the global nuclear industry, it is of course meeting all those sustainable development goals, but we need more people coming in. Because what is the question we are going to ask us is what will power our electric future? There is more need for electricity. We need all the different uh, aspects of the technology, but specifically, we need electricity. Every day, we need clean water. Every minute, we need clean air to breathe. But every second, we want electricity. And that has to be clean. And we have to build a stronger, and cleaner tomorrow. And you can be part of this. We will welcome you all. We really like that you are coming out and having large and great ambitions. It's time for action. It's time for ambition. And uh, we are working specifically with the World Nuclear University as well. And after a few years of working, and if you need to, to uh, learn more, as Bill said, it's always about more learning. It's also, we are doing the global setting of the industry. We are updating what's ongoing and you will meet the leaders from all over in the nuclear community and speak to them because leadership is something that comes with this type of education that you have chosen. I think both Bill and Rita mentioned how important it is. You are important. Whatever you do, you'll become a chain reaction. So it's extremely important to be engaged, to be, have ambition, to do the best and to continue to learn. And it's fun learning, of course. There's lots of things already ongoing in the industry. I just wanted to mention that we have like 50 reactors under construction. And of course, we have all these new ways to be able to use the, uh, the different technologies, which Rita mentioned, we need to do, have the desalination. We need to have industrial process heat. We need a lot of more aspects, not only the power. 
but also we have already these reactors ongoing. And a couple of days ago, we celebrated a, a newcomer country, United Arab Emirates, operating its first reactor. And there are three, three more countries soon going to start operation. And then there's 50 more projects ongoing. Then, because of this time of the, of the pandemic, we need also to work with the stimulus packages, the infrastructures. There is much more for us to do for all of us, because there are 100 shovel-ready projects around the world, giving fantastic opportunities to bring a stronger and better tomorrow. And we need all those nuclear skills to be here. I congratulate you all, and you're welcome. When you feel ready to work with the industry, very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agneta. Appreciate your remarks. And we're going to now move into the second set of speakers. Um, we are going to have Chris Levesque, who is President and Chief Executive Officer of TerraPower, uh, Horg Starflingler, who is Ian, Ian, Ian President and Executive Director of the University of Stuttgart Institute of Nuclear Technology and Energy Systems, uh, Katie Mama, who is a PhD candidate in nuclear engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and um, Haruka uh, Ozaki, who is in her final year as an undergraduate student in nuclear engineering at the University of Fukui in Japan. Um, I'll invite all the speakers to, uh, to join us on camera, and I will turn first to Mr. Uh, Levesque, who is, as I mentioned earlier, the President and Chief Executive Officer of TerraPower. Uh, TerraPower um, is a company that's in pursuit of next generation nuclear energy solutions, and uh, he also oversees TerraPower's new venture into therapeutic medical isotopes. Um, Chris um, has had a long career in the nuclear field, Prior to TerraPower, he led major reactor building projects in both Westinghouse and Arriva, overseeing projects in both the U.S. and Finland. And earlier, where he began his career, he was a, he was a proud officer in the U.S. Nuclear Navy. And um, Chris, we look forward to your remarks. And um, I believe you also have a special message from your boss. <laughs> That's right, Bill. Um, and can you see and hear me? We see you. Excellent, thanks. Well, good morning from Seattle, Washington. Uh, thank you, Director General Magwood and to the OECD Nuclear Energy Agency for allowing me to join you today uh, to honor our nuclear science and engineering students from all over the world. Um, Bill, uh, Bill Gates really would have liked to have been here today. Um, as you know, he's quite involved with uh, fighting the coronavirus. Uh, you've probably seen him on your, your media all around the world. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, climate change and nuclear energy is still in the forefront of his mind, and uh, he wanted me to send this uh, special message to you today, which I'm now going to read. Uh, so first, uh, this is from Bill. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate the graduates of the classes of 2020 and 2021. You don't need me to tell you that we're living in difficult times. I expect that you didn't close this chapter of your life quite how you envisioned. But I hope you look back, proud of your hard work as you completed your studies, despite the challenges that you faced. I hope you will continue to draw on the mindset that you have right now as you look ahead. As graduates in the fields of nuclear science, technology, and engineering, you have an important role in helping to create a better future for the entire world. That's because as nuclear innovators and leaders, you are in a position to help our world rise to meet two significant interwoven challenges, stopping climate change and raising global living standards. I am a big believer in the opportunity that nuclear energy and advanced nuclear technologies in particular offer our world. With smart and determined people like you supporting their development and deployment, these technologies can help us innovate a truly carbon-free future and bring affordable energy to the 789 million people who live without. Your work can help us create a cleaner, healthier, and more prosperous future for people around the world. I know the challenges we face can seem daunting, but I have no doubt that you will rise to the occasion and help create a better energy future for all of us. 
Congratulations and good luck. Signed, Bill Gates. Well, uh, it, it will uh, not be of quite the stature as, as Bill's comments, but I'd also like to extend my own congratulations to the classes of 2020 and 2021. In choosing to study nuclear science and engineering, you've all shown the same vision that Bill Gates did when he founded TerraPower 14 years ago. The world faces tremendous challenges that can only be solved if we move forward in nuclear science. One of Bill's favorite books, Factfulness by Hans Rosling, outlines how the world population will grow from under 1 billion people to nearly 10 billion in just two short centuries. So that means in the entire history of the world, in all of the millennia, population has been less than 1 billion people. But in just the few generations that bracket our lifetimes, population will grow tenfold. That's not linear change. We've learned much from the COVID-19 pandemic. One big reminder for me is that when nature acts, it can act exponentially. As we watched the news in March, we learned a lot about how infection spreading occurs. We learned that when doubling times approached three days, we had a big problem. So with COVID-19, as terrible as it is, we have a line of sight on a solution, the vaccine. For the climate though, we have a problem that we will need to manage for decades. We are now only beginning to understand the impacts on our planet from the tenfold growth in population that is occurring almost overnight. Classes of 2020 and 2021, we need your help. The world is undergoing a massive build out of wind and solar power generation. When I was in India with uh, Dr. Rita Barnwell in, in February with other nuclear energy companies, we received detailed briefings on the energy situation there. India should be admired for bringing electricity to all 600,000 villages in their country of 1.4 billion people. With India currently at 60% coal power, the, imp the impact on air quality is profound Yet on balance, the recent wave of electrification has improved life overall. But here is where we see the need for a huge wave of nuclear new build. India is only one example. Countries around the world are doing two things. They're building out wind and solar until they reach either economic limits or intermittency limits from doing so. They will then strive to turn off their coal and natural gas generation in order to meet the CO2 reduction mandates that are increasingly being imposed around the world. These two things cannot happen together. As we retire fossil-based generation that runs 24 seven, we need to deal with the intermittency of the wind and the sun. The world needs a fusion breakthrough and we need a concerted move to advanced nuclear fission power plants. Are you all ready to go? NEA has supported advanced nuclear energy for many years in the Generation 4 Forum. It's now time to build Generation 4 demonstration plants, as, as, as Dr. Barrowell was mentioning, and uh, also uh, Agneta. Uh, regardless of the region you have studied in, whether, whether it was on the continent of, of Europe, Asia, the Americas, um, or elsewhere, you will see Generation 4 demonstration projects beginning soon. In the late 1950s, the shipping port demonstration reactor in the US proved to the world that light water reactors could be built on a commercial scale. This led to hundreds of reactors around the world based on that technology. It is now time to repeat this history with advanced reactors. Following successful demonstration, these plants will be needed around the world including in many new countries that did not have nuclear energy programs today. There is no way to simultaneously tackle both climate change and the growing need for energy that was predicted by Hans Rosling without nuclear. Fellow nuclear scientists and engineers, you have chosen the right profession, and it is not just because of nuclear energy. In TerraPower's lab in Everett, Washington, we will soon produce actinium-225 for cancer treatment. Actinium-225 is widely recognized as the most promising isotope for targeted alpha therapy and has been sought by the medical community for decades. As we move forward in nuclear science, 
we experience collateral benefits that go far beyond energy production. My career in nuclear has taken me from operating submarines at sea to commercial nuclear plants around the world to my current role in advanced nuclear. My interest in this fascinating field of science has only grown over time. I welcome you all to this great community, and I can't wait to see the new ideas and talents you will bring us. Thank you and best of luck to you all. Thank you very much, Chris. And please uh, pass our regards to uh, Mr. Gates. And perhaps if we end up doing this again next year, we'll, uh, we'll invite him again and we'll, we'll, we'll give him a little bit more notice and perhaps we'll get him, get him before us. Uh, but again, Excellent. thank you Excellent. very much for your comments. And by the way, Chris, I, I see you as just as big a superstar as he is in our field. <laughs> <laughs> um, Next is going to be uh, Horg Starflinger, who is Ian, 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 President and Executive Director of the University of Stuttgart Institute of Nuclear Technology and Energy Systems. Um, he um, graduated in mechanical engineering from Rural University of Bochum and has his uh, PhD in Germany from that same university. And I look forward to your remarks, sir. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody from Germany. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, thank you. Um, students, congratulations. You made it. And I hope you already made a big party under Corona, let's say, under Corona circumstances. I know that it can't be as it uh, was in the years before. Well, I'm very pleased to speak to you today. I would like to start by thanking the OECD NEA and William uh, Macwood and his team and also our team from Inan, uh, especially Gabriel uh, Pavel, for the excellent organization of our event. Unfortunately, during these corona times, we cannot meet in person. Most of us are experienced that both life and work are changing, and education too. Suddenly, lectures are given online. Remote learning from home is mandatory for many of us. Beside the COVID-19 change effect, I see also a more general change process in the nuclear field. And I would like to address this on the one hand as a university professor and on the other hand as president of the European Nuclear Education Network. There's a strength of any nuclear related technology which is underestimated by many people. It's versatil versatility and the variety of possible employments. Nuclear engineers and scientists can be found in research and development. In industry, we just heard Chris for, of TerraPower, for instance. There are many jobs in operation of reactors, in new builds, in development of new reactor types like Gen4, SMRs, we all heard this, and, uh, but also in decommissioning of reactors and waste management. You will find nuclear people at governmental level, technical safety organizations. In addition, people with a, with a nuclear background are increasingly found in hospitals. I see a worldwide increasing demand for people with a sound nuclear background. Nuclear technology is in fact a new, a new future technology and you belong to this group of people about the nuclear, the nuclear experts. At the university, I see a change of the behavior of the students. Last year, I listened to a speech of students from the German Young Generation Network of the German Nuclear Society, in which they described their expectations of a future nuclear working environment. The statement that amazed me most was that job hopping, meaning that uh, leaving the workplace after two to three years and then working in another company is no burden. It's strongly desired. And by the way, the second message was that they love vegan bratwurst. So how do we deal with these millennials that are currently entering the universities and will be released into reality in a few years? Compared to the past, students and graduates expect more flexibility during their studies and in their future jobs. And they are not afraid of traveling. This is where Enen comes into play. Enen is a nonprofit organization located in Brussels, Belgium. We have currently 75, 77 members, most of them universities, mainly from Europe, but also some members from the US, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation. 
Research centers, technical safety organizations, and industry are also members. We have MOUs with international organizations such as the OECD NEA in Paris and the IEA in Vienna. Our mission is to attract, develop, and retain young talents in the nuclear field, no matter in which field. We unify radiation protection students from hospitals with bedrock scientists from final disposal research. We address pupils from secondary schools, bachelor, master students, PhD students, and young graduates. In a members offer courses, seminars, and conferences. In a members develop new learning environments. The Indian community is very active. I would like to give just one very short example of our activities. In my opinion, it is the most successful measure for students within the last two decades, the INN Plus Mobility Program. INN Plus is a project funded by the European Commission. The Mobility Fund for Young Nuclear Talents is equipped with 1 million euro. I must confess, we never expected such a run on this mobility program. We have given mobility grants to more than 600 euros, and I must say, from all over the world. I see this run on mobility ground as a proof of the students or that the students are becoming more flexible and more international. We all need to work together to enable a sustainable future. For me as a university professor, it's important to provide students with a very good nuclear education and as an president to support their mobility and their, their participation in international courses, lectures and events. For you, the students and graduates, I would like to encourage you to enlarge your network. Talk about good studies and courses. Go abroad to experience other cultures and learning environments. Here, Enen can help you. And don't forget to talk about nuclear. In this way, we will create a successful nuclear future and master the upcoming changes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those comments. We appreciate them very much and appreciate the work that Enan does in, in, in fostering uh, edu nuclear education in Europe. It's very, very important work. Um, next, we have um, the first of two um, students to speak uh, to you. And we're very pleased to have Katie Muma with us. She's a PhD student in nuclear engineering and engineering physics with a PhD minor in science communication. So that, that's, that, that's, we need more of those. Uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the U.S., she earned her bachelor's in nuclear plasma and radiological engineering at the University of Illinois and her master's from the University of Wisconsin in, in May 2020. Uh, Katie, the floor is yours. Thank you. So I can only assume that I was asked to speak to you all because of my experience as in online nuclear science communicator, which is truly the nicest way to say that I spend too much time on Twitter. But anyway, you know, getting a degree is a little bit like building a nuclear reactor. Some of us started the process without finalizing all of our plans to finish. We all run into challenges along the way. Sometimes we slip up make a mistake and have to redo something. It's not uncommon for it to take a little bit longer than expected to be finished up. And also like a nuclear reactor, the moment that we finish is a big deal. We can look back on years of hard work and achievement. We built something in our graduation date, our commercial operation date, if you will, is something that will be a memorable point in our story forever. But it's also just the beginning of our next chapter. It's the most obvious thing to say in a moment like this, but I have to say it anyway. What a weird time to graduate. <laughs> Graduation is often a turning point in a life, but we're all graduating with the added excitement of being at a pivot point for how work gets done, and pivot points can pinch. We've experienced rapid changes in how we take classes, conduct research, and interact with the scientific community. Just as importantly, we're graduating at a critical point in the trajectory of nuclear energy. 
And just like many of us don't fully know where we're headed, there's a lot of uncertainty and also excitement in the future of nuclear power and other nuclear technologies. The, new, the news cycle moves fast and the pandemic dominates a lot of my feed, but I've been particularly inspired by some of the recent news around the world. The nuclear reactors on the floating nuclear power plant, excuse my Russian, academic Lomonosov, uh, have been fully commissioned and are now bringing power to communities in the most remote corner of Russia. In the United States, the micro-reactor company Oklo submitted their combined license application, ushering in a new era of non-light water reactors and micro-reactors, um, with hopefully many more to come. The UAE just connected Unit 1 of their Baraka plant, which marks the first operating nuclear power plant not just for the Emiratis, but for the entire Middle East. Rwanda's government recently approved plans to build a research reactor in hopes to expand their domestic expertise in food, irradi food irradiation and nuclear medicine. I could keep going, but they only gave me a couple minutes, but really, it's a really exciting time. A few weeks ago, I asked my fellow graduates to reach out and share their experiences from this tumultuous year, and I heard back from dozens of graduating nuclear engineers and scientists. First of all, I was reminded just how much people like to talk about themselves, but I also heard a lot of common themes. COVID-19 looms large in our daily lives, but most graduates I talked to were focused on the future and enthusiastic about building their careers in nuclear. They told me about their climate concerns, about their excitement for advanced reactor startups, and their commitment to longer and healthier lives brought about by medical uses of radiation and other peaceful uses of atomic technology. I know that the current moment is chaotic, but our nuclear future holds so much promise. Among these thoughts about the current pandemic and the future of nuclear power, I also wanna make sure that we reflect on the years of studying and working that led up to this moment. Whether you're graduating with an associate's, bachelor's, master's, doctorate, or I don't know, some other kind of degree, you've worked years and sacrificed a lot to get to this moment. There are some parts of our education that we'll probably never use, like a containment spray pump that you hopefully will never have to turn on. It's probably a different system for all of us, but between you and me, I hope to never have to do plasma physics again. All respect to you, Dr. White, and all the other plasma physicists, uh, just not for me. But we all know that a nuclear facility is not unchanging once completed. The construction is never over. It's just called maintenance or lifelong learning once you're done getting letter grades. And just like every nuclear reactor currently under or just finishing up construction, I hope all of you have productive and enjoyable careers for the next 40 years or maybe longer if you so choose. Thank you so much and congratulations to all of the graduates out there. Thank you very much, Katie. And good luck to you and your continuing studies. Thank you. And our, our final speaker today is Haruka uh, Ozaki, who is an undergraduate nuclear engineering student at the University of Fukui Graduate School of Engineering. Um, she pr participates every year in the nuclear engineering summer course hosted by the Japan Atomic Energy Agency, a very, very close partner of the NEA. And she's currently in her fourth year as an undergraduate student. Um, and she works with Professor Uno um, at the university in the research of the Research Institute of Nuclear Engineering. Her research theme for her thesis is R&D of Thermal Conductivity Measurement Technology and Transient Plane Heat Source Method. Veruca, the floor is yours. Can you hear my voices? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Haruka Okazaki. I'm a fourth year undergraduate student at the University of Fukui. I am very honored to have this opportunity. My major is nuclear engineering and the theme of my thesis is nuclear fuel. I have started doing research for it at Dine. Dine is the campus of 
University of Fukui to study nuclear energy since April of this year. I will graduate from Fukui University in March next year and plan to study at Tokyo Institute of Technology Graduate School from next April. Today, I would like to talk about some reasons why I majored in nuclear power, what I learned during the four years at Rene, and what I plan for my future. First, I want to talk about the reasons why I majored in nuclear power. The first reason is the accident that occurred at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The accident happened when I was an elementary school student. When I was a junior high school student, I went on a trip to Fukushima with my father, who is a social studies teacher in junior high school, and my mother and my sister. When I went shopping at a local store, I was encouraged by the local people who are strong and alive. From then, I've wanted to contribute to the recovery from the Tohoku earthquake and nuclear accident. The second reason is that I studied energy in high school. I studied various energies such as hydrogen energy and geothermal energy. So, um, in high school. I also had the experience of studying abroad in the United States and at that time I had the opportunity to listen to the lecture about nuclear energy on the campus of MIT. From it, I've been interested in the huge energy that the fishing has. From these, from these reasons, I decided to study nuclear energy. In addition, I want to talk about what I learned during the four years. At school, I actively took classes in nuclear energy from the first grade and took all the classes in the field of energy that I could take in the undergraduate courses. It covers a wide range of fields, including the active physics, radiation, and material science, and so on. Fukui University has many professors in various fields of nuclear energy, all of whom are knowledgeable and very kind to students like me. In addition to that, I actively participated in various training seminars outside the university and gained a lot of knowledge about nuclear energy and relationship with people. In particular, I've participated in summer vacation training of the Japan Atomic Energy Agency, called JAEA, three times since I was a first year undergraduate student. Every year, it was a great experience to get a new sense of knowledge about fuel and so on. Finally, I want to talk about what I plan for my future. Almost every Japanese people has a negative opinion of nuclear energy and they are few students studying nuclear energy in, in Japan and they are few women. I think the reason for it is the history of nuclear accidents and the atomic bombs. Based on the recent land, Japan has been working to strengthen safety regulation, level regulatory systems and improve safety. However, I think that there are still unclear points in nuclear science. For example, decommissioning, deprocessing, and recycling of spent nuclear fuel, and disposal of high level radioactive waste, which will become increasingly important and not yet clear. I want to continue studying nuclear engineering in graduate school and try to clarify various things that are unclear of nuclear engineering. So finally, I want to say unclear nuclear to clear and clean nuclear. I'm still 
young and immature, but I think that I can do something for the future of nuclear power because I'm a Japanese woman and I spent years and years studying the result of Fukushima nuclear accidents. I believe that nuclear power can be a good energy source if it is used peacefully and properly. I want to contribute on an international level for its use. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. And I think I can speak for most of the other speakers that a uh, few more people in Japan like you and we'll, there'll be nothing to worry about. Excellent. Thank you very much, Haruka. Excellent. So we're, that's our last speaker um, and we're going to wrap up, but I want to give each speaker um, perhaps 10 seconds uh, for a final message to all the graduates. And uh, Rita, if you're, if you're still with us, I know you're off camera at the moment, but if you're still with us, can you come back on and give us a final message? Excellent. You have the floor for 10 seconds, a final message to the graduates. Please unmute. There we go. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So um, enjoy these, these next steps in your life. Um, take time to savor, savor the moment uh, and embrace the unfamiliarity, be flexible. Um, and again, I very much look forward to um, having you join our ranks and good luck. And final message, you must be very happy. I think half the people on today had an MIT connection. I'm very honored by that. The last message I think is to say congratulations again, good luck in the future, and make the time to read more books. Very good advice. Thank you. Agneta. Oh, I would like to say everything you do and, and your, your impact in your networks is chain reactions. So what you do, whatever you do, do it well, do your best. It's time for action. It's time for high ambitions. And it will be a fantastic career. Thank you very much. Chris. As we've seen today, the nuclear community is a very diverse one. And uh, in joining it, you're going to have the ability to work with, with people from all backgrounds. Uh, savor that. It's going to be one of the most enriching things of your career. Um, it's also going to be one of the things that lets us solve really tough problems because we, we need people from all perspectives to, to solve the problems in front of us. Agreed. Thank you very much. Corey, please. Yeah, thank you. Well, my final advice is uh, go abroad to experience other countries, other learning environments, and don't forget to talk. This is important. Talk to other people, talk about nuclear, talk why you have uh, chosen this profession and so on and so on. And this is how we can, uh, let's say, really make a sustainable future for nuclear. Very much agree with it. Thank you. Katie, any final words? Uh, stay in contact with your friends and, and fellow graduating students, even if it's just on LinkedIn. Uh, and do not throw away your notes and textbooks. Keep those. Reference them later. I still have all my textbooks. Good advice. Faruka. Okay. First of all, congratulations on your graduation. I think a generation will, be decide, will decide the future of nuclear power. As I said, I'm, I'm also immature, so let's hard, work hard and research. Thank you. Good advice to all of us. Thank you very much. Aditi, if you can come on camera. I want to again, want, I want to join in uh, Rena's comments and thanking you personally for the efforts to pull all this together. You did a great job and you're, you're a fantastic example of a nuclear engineer uh, graduate, a recent, relatively recent PhD, newly minted. And um, we certainly wish you the best in your future career. And thank you for all your efforts. So if you want to give one final comment, since you've been listening to all this, please, you can have the final, the final, final comment. 
I'm going to agree with Anne and Katie. Read, read as many books as you can and keep all your textbooks. I think that's excellent advice. I'm a, I'm a big lover of books. Very good advice. And I will then draw this to a close. Again, congratulations to all, all of you, the, the, the students who, who are going forward into the future. Um, the future is yours to shape. Um, take advantage of it. Don't, don't enjoy every minute of it. And again, I'll reiterate my, my comments from before. Be proud, be responsible, be visionary, and go save the world. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the speakers. So if we could just have the final slide to wrap up, great. Well, thanks to all of you for participating and especially to our speakers for their really inspiring remarks. And a big congratulations to the graduating classes of 2020 and 2021. As we said, a recording of this event will be made available online in the near future. Do follow the NEA on social media for updates. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Each of you who registered for this event have also received a link to a survey, also shown on this slide. The purpose of the survey is to create a list of students from the graduating classes of 2020 and 2021, spotlight their achievements, and signal their presence on the job market to potential employers around the world. Please feel free to share this link with your friends, classmates, and colleagues who may not have been able to join us today. The list, once compiled, will be shared on the ENAN Plus website. Finally, in closing, I'd like to once again add my congratulations to the graduates and on behalf of the new generation in the global nuclear science and technology community, I would like to say that we are so delighted to welcome you as vital members contributors and future leaders in the field. Thank you very much.